Hello, I'm Mark Christ, Head of Adult Programming for the Central Arkansas Library System, and uh, I'm also a Civil War historian. I've written and edited several books on the Civil War in Arkansas, and today I'm going to be talking about the skirmish at Orient Ferry, which happened on July 8 of 1862. Now, there were more than 770 uh, offensive operations that took place in Arkansas during the Civil War. Only three other states had more military activity than we had here in Arkansas. And while there were large-scale battles like Prairie Grove, Jenkins Ferry, and Pea Ridge, there were uh, the, the majority of those uh, 770 uh, operations were uh, smaller affairs, more at the company level. So the skirmish at Orient Ferry is more uh, indicative of the activity that took place in Arkansas during the, the uh, Civil War. So I'm going to start with uh, a little background. So the Battle of Pea Ridge was fought uh, May, uh, March 7th and 8th of uh, 1862. Uh, General, um, Union General Samuel Curtis's Army of the West soundly defeated Earl Van Dorn's Confederate Army of the West. And uh, Van Dorn ended up falling back into uh, the Arkansas River Valley. Curtis, who we see here, took his army back into Missouri and kind of ghosted along the, uh, the border, just in case Van Dorn should try to uh, once again invade Missouri from, from Arkansas. But Van Dorn was ordered east of the Mississippi, so he took the entire, uh, pretty much every soldier, uh, horse, wagon, cannon, everything Confederate uh, to the other side of the Mississippi River. Curtis uh, thought this was an opportune time for him to, in, in, in turn, to, uh, to invade Arkansas. So Curtis occupied Batesville on uh, May the 2nd and ordered uh, General Frederick Steele, who we see here with his horse and his dog, uh, to join him from southeast uh, Missouri, where, where Steele was uh, centered. Uh, he did so, and uh, Steele occupied Jackson Port on uh, May the 4th. Curtis then ordered uh, General Peter Osterhaus to take his second division, uh, I'm sorry, third division to Searcy, which he did on uh, May 11th, and then ordered uh, uh, General Eugene Carr's second division to uh, join him as well on May the, uh, the 20th. At that point, um, they were basically threatening Little Rock, which led Confederate Governor um, uh, Rector to uh, flee to Hot Springs with the state archives, which did not do anything for his uh, political career. Uh, Curtis, however, um, determined that his supply line from Missouri over the, the horrid roads in the uh, Ozark Mountains was not sustainable, so he ordered the, uh, the, the army to fall back to Batesville as he tried to find uh, means of supply. So he uh, sent word to Memphis that he was in, in need of, of supplies, <clears throat> and a flotilla set out to, uh, to, to bring him uh, food and fodder and things like that. Uh, the flotilla uh, came down the Mississippi and then cut up the uh, White River to uh, <clears throat> join, join up with Curtis. As they approached uh, St. Charles on the, uh, on the White River, Confederates had set up a couple of, uh, of massed batteries, and when the uh, Union gunboat Mound City, which we see here, uh, steamed into view, they opened fire, and a Confederate shot pierced the, uh, the armor of the Mound City and burst her, uh, her, her boiler, which uh, sent uh, scalding steam throughout the, the ship, uh, killing a lot of men right there. Others jumped into the river to, uh, to escape it and were shot down by Confederate snipers. The, uh, the, the death toll on the Mound City was uh, 150 killed out of the 175-man crew by what's been called the deadliest shot, single shot of the Civil War. Um, the 46th Indiana, which was on a, a following transport, was, was set ashore and they easily overran the Confederates and the, the uh, Flotilla continued up the White River, but uh, low water forced them to stop before they could bring supplies to Curtis. Curtis then uh, uh, 
left Batesville and did something that uh, would be emulated later uh, the following year by uh, U.S. Grant in Mississippi, and then in 1864, most famously by uh, General Sherman in, in Georgia, he cut his supply lines and marched cross country to live off the uh, live off the land and get to the Mississippi River where he could get supplies. As he uh, stormed across eastern Arkansas, uh, thousands of slaves fled their their plantations and for the protection of his army, and uh, uh, followed him into uh, Helena, which he re uh, where he, which he reached on July the twelfth, eighteen sixty two. This photo here is a, uh, is, is a shot of one of the contraband camps where these refugee uh, freedmen lived in, in Helena. And that brings us to our story. So first I'll talk about the units that were involved. Uh, first was the 15th uh, Texas Cavalry, which mustered in on May 10, 1862. It was led by Colonel uh, George Sweet, a, a New York native who embraced the Confederate cause. Uh, they moved into Arkansas in April, and when Curtis left Batesville, they occupied the Independence County town. The image here is the, uh, <clears throat> the flag of the 15th Texas Cavalry. On the other side, on the Union side in, the, in this battle, were the uh, uh, 5th Kansas Cavalry. Uh, the 5th was organized at Leavenworth, Kansas between July 12, 1861 and January 22 of 1862. And a lot of these guys were veterans of the uh, border war between uh, Missouri and Kansas that preceded the Civil War. And these were, uh, these were really some tough guys. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, fifth was at Rolla, Missouri, when ordered to join Curtis's army on June 17th. And a small uh, group was uh, left behind to guard the supplies. And these are the men who will be involved in this, uh, this skirmish. Their commander, <clears throat> They're commanded by uh, Captain William F. Kreitz of Company A of the 5th Kansas. They left Rolla on June 28th, uh, picked, up de picked up detachments of Companies D and K at Houston on June 30th. So the total force on the, uh, the 5th Kansas side was around 200 men. They entered Arkansas on July 6th at Salem, where they ran into about 300 men of Colonel William Coleman's Missouri Regiment, who were uh, south of there. And H.D. Uh, Fisher of the 5th Kansas wrote, Our advance immediately charged upon them, putting them to rout. In a few minutes, the whole our party were driven like chaff before the wind. And in this, uh, this action, six rebels were killed and three were captured. The next day, they ran into about 17 uh, rebels getting ready to split some loot they had stolen from sutlers at Jackson Port a few days earlier. Kreitz wrote, we appropriated, such, we appropriated such goods as could be easily transported, destroyed the remainder, and kept the men prisoners. They then moved on toward uh, Orient Ferry on the Black River between Independence and, and Jackson Counties, which uh, was there. You, if you look at the map, you can see Parakeet on, on the uh, on the Jackson County side. Um, so in Batesville, meanwhile, uh, Sweet got word that the Kansans were approaching. And Lieutenant R.M. Collins wrote that uh, the capture of 200 Yankees and a big train of wagons filled with good supplies caused visions of glory, honor, and a Brigadier General's commission all to pass in rapid succession before his eyes. Now, Collins wrote uh, uh, this book you see here called Unwritten Chapters of the uh, War Between the States, and it is probably one of the uh, two or three best accounts of, uh, of the Civil War written by a junior officer, and I, I recommend it highly. Um, <clears throat> so Collins uh, said of Sweet, he made one of his spread eagle speeches, winding up with his favorite expression, we're going to punish the enemy. And then they took off. When not, when not in a lope, our horses were in a dead run. The day was hot, the weather dry, and the roads dusty. Uh, the Kansans were already at the ferry, and most of the troops had already crossed the uh, crossed the river to the Jackson uh, Jackson County side, with the uh, with the horses and wagons uh, being transported on a small ferry boat. So H.D. Fisher, the fifth, Can the fifth Kansas, wrote, uh, "Many of the men were in bathing, no guard out any distance. Men lying around on the bank of the river here and there, horses and guns yonder or somewhere else. A few willing ones working all the time." Suddenly, we were thrown into the greatest consternation by the cry of Cesesh, Cesesh. 
The uh, Confederate advance was led by Captain Tom Johnson, who was the regimental uh, quartermaster, Captain Alsdorf Faulkner, who we see here. Uh, Johnson led the charge, and uh, George Flanders of the 5th Kansas wrote, a large man with sandy hair and whiskers, they called him a large man with sandy hair and whiskers, he rode at the head of his men and cried out to us, surrender you SOBs, we have, we have you just where we want you, I demand an unconditional surrender, I surrender or I will kill every GD one of you. He was swiftly shot dead, pierced by four bullets in his breast, all within four inches of each other. R.M. Collins wrote that Tom Teague, a close friend of Johnson's, uh, shot one of his killers, quote, putting the muzzle of his gun so close to him that it set his clothing on fire. This was probably Stephen Berthoud of Camp Nier, 5th Kansas. H.D. Fisher wrote that uh, Berthoud was shot Quote, through the calf of his left leg, not dangerous, and burnt by passing ball on the right breast. Sweet reported, unfortunately for us, we had to charge down a lane and could only move four abreast, and before the main body could gain position, both our advance and the enemy became en enveloped in such a cloud of dust and smoke from the fire of our guns that for a few minutes it was impossible to distinguish friend from foe. Um, Collins wrote more colorfully, we went at them with such a whirly gust and a yell that the Kansas fellows seemed kind of appalled and hit out, and we had things our way for a few minutes. But those fellows across the river were the first to recover and commence firing a deadly fire into us from their carbines and six shooters. Kreitz wrote, with great coolness, the men took cover behind the trees and ravines and behind houses and fired with death dealing precision. George Flanders of the uh, 5th Kansas wrote of this man we see here, and Corporal Blackheart of Topeka immediately swam ashore and seized his revolver <clears throat> and ran up the hill without a rag on him and banged away at them. Others ran the ferry to the opposite shore and brought troopers back to the Independence County side. <clears throat> Others opened fire with their sharps carbines. Now the Texans were just armed with pistols and shotguns, so they were completely outgunned. Sweet wrote that he endeavored to rally the men, but the enemy was now pouring a perfect shower of balls upon my broken and confused columns, and I soon found all attempts to reform under such a fire impracticable. R.M. Collins decided that we were whipped, and whipped badly at that. All the boys seemed to reach the same conclusion at once and turned to run, every fellow on his own hook. Then he said, the woods seemed to be full of us, and we were making the brush pop like a drove of longhorn cattle on a stampede. Uh, Collins reported that the uh, Texans fell back about a mile <clears throat> and formed a jittery line. And when it was about to break, quote, Captain Faulkner drew his pistol and threatened to shoot the first man that broke. He cursed like a Turk and said if he had known that was the way Texans conducted themselves in battle, he never would have come all the way from the state of New York to help them. So they ended up falling back to uh, falling back to Batesville. So the uh, in, in this skirmish at Orient Ferry, uh, seven Texans were killed and seven were wounded. Uh, accounts differ on the 5th Kansas' casualty, but it looks like one man drowned and uh, as many as three were uh, wounded and three were taken prisoner. Kreutz wrote, after the repulse of the enemy, the ferrying was resumed and by 10 o'clock the train and men were landed safely on the opposite side. <clears throat> the next morning, George Flanders recounted, we burnt all of our tents and provisions that we did not need and such things as we could do without to lighten our load for the great, for the army was still 70 miles ahead of us and our train contained articles of great importance to the regiment. They caught up with uh, Curtis's army on July 14, uh, two days after the uh, advanced Yankees had uh, occupied uh, Helena. So what happened to these uh, two regiments for the rest of the war? Well, the, uh, for the 15th Texas, uh, they were dismounted in uh, 1862. Uh, they were uh, among the uh, garrison at Arkansas Post when it was attacked on uh, January 11, 1863. Uh, the entire regiment was captured and sent to a prisoner of war camp. They were exchanged in April of, of 63. They were uh, later consolidated with a number of regiments as, uh, as their casualties mounted. And uh, they, they ended up fighting in uh, Hiram Granberry's regiment in the Army of the Tennessee through some of the hardest battles that were fought in uh, Tennessee, Kentucky, and uh, Alabama. Uh, the 15th Kansas, uh, 
At the end of the war, numbered only 43 men, three officers, eight non-commissioned officers, two teamsters, and 31 enlisted men. Out of the 1,200 men who had served in the regiment at one time or another, only 43, or 3.5%, were still uh, there at the end of the war. Several of the uh, 15th Parakeet Bluff casualties, uh, having been uh, buried on the battlefield, were moved at the turn of the 20th century when the bluff began to fall into the Black River, uh, revealing their, their grave sites. The 5th Kansas would, uh, would, would skirmish uh, heavily around Helena uh, and was, was a key player in the July 4, 1863 Battle of Helena, which I'll talk about in a, another program. Uh, they, uh, after Little Rock fell, they uh, occupied Pine Bluff and uh, won the Battle of Pine Bluff on October 25, 1863. Over the course of the war, they lost 47 men killed or mortally wounded and uh, 221 men of the 5th Kansas died of disease. So if you have any questions, feel free to um, email me at mchrist at cals.org and have a good day.